I don't need fuel. Nope. I'm like, I wake up like this. <laughs> Decorating. She does. <laughs> That's the real reason Jack's here. <laughs> I'm just catching on to that. I was like, it's so sweet. She wants me to help. Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today we're doing something crazy. We're doing something wild. We are styling up some bookshelves. <laughs> Doesn't get much crazier than that, people. I know, we're living on the wild side <laughs> here. But <laughs> Jack is here to be my assistant because uh, it, I think we can go a lot faster if I have somebody to help me because we have these huge bookshelves to style up. Yeah. And I thought it'd be really nice because you were saying the other day that you have no idea how I do this. No, zero clue. Like I need like a sketch of like, put this there, put that there. Cause I have no idea how you do this. Okay, well it really isn't super complicated. Uh, I do like to have a more minimal aesthetic in the shelves yeah. rather than like an overstuffed look. I actually really like that look too, but I find myself getting to where I like to minimize it, especially during spring and summer. We tend to just shove stuff in there. <laughs> All the time, we're like, just put that book in there. I don't just know put where that it thing goes. Yeah, just stick it in there. So today we're just gonna be styling up these shelves and I'm gonna be sharing with you our pro tips. Okay, my pro tips. <laughs> my amateur tips. <laughs> Hey, you're a good helper though. I, I am a good helper, that. I'm here to help. Yeah, so uh, I'll share my designer tips and tricks on how to style up your shelves like a pro. I hope you're gonna love it. We have an incredible community. I literally am just amazed all I the know. time. Aren't all you? the time. The comments, the community that we have, it, it's incredible. So we hope you'll hit subscribe if you haven't already. And give the video a big thumbs up. And let us know if you like these kinds of videos and if there's another part of your house that you're struggling with how to style up, that way we can make you another video. So, Sounds all right, fun. for now, let's jump in, shall we? Let's do it. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. Go ahead, get fuel. Where's, yeah. <laughs> get fuel. I don't need fuel. Nope. I'm like, I wake up like this. <laughs> Decorating. She does. <laughs> I really do. You really I? do. I know. I jump out. I'm like, la, let's I don't decorate. Wake I wake up like, la, and you're like, la. I'm so excited. I'm like salivating. <laughs> Just thinking about decorating. All right, let's show you two. Let's this. do it. All right. <laughs> All right. Step number one. I I do this every time, and sometimes people are like. That looks like the more complicated way of doing things, but I really just think you have to do this step. And that number one, you need to empty everything out. So <laughs> that's the real reason Jack's here. <laughs> I'm just catching on to that. I was like, it's so sweet. She wants me to help. Uh-huh. <laughs> and learn how to do this? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do think it's really helpful though to take everything out because when you have a lot of stuff in there, you just tend to kind of build on top of what's already there. My recommendation to you is to separate out by category. So I'm gonna separate out the books, I'm gonna separate out the accessories, mm, cool. and probably separate out like vessels versus like just like an art piece or something. And that way, when I, that way as I put it together, I, I know what I'm kind of reaching for and it's, I like to be organized. So you don't have to do that, just take it all off. <laughs> but either way, let's do that now. Okay. All right, so as you can see, if I don't block the entire thing here, it's not looking that bad, but like I said, a lot of us end up like kind of shoving stuff on the shelves and that's just really normal. Or I do this all the time. I'll steal something out of here and I'll use it for somewhere else. And so things just kind of end up random. So first thing to do is empty. So let's do that. Oh, the French Royal Wardrobe. I'm like seeing all my books. I'll just sit down and read my books and drink coffee while I get Jack to empty this. <laughs> you know, I'd never actually do that. No. I could never. You can't resist taking stuff out of a cabinet. No, I could never just sit around like people are working. Oh my God. I don't, do it. I don't need a kettlebell, I just need this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, we're just taking a little wet cloth and wiping these down, because apparently even with the glass, they still get a little bit dusty. That way we have a nice clean slate in every sense of that word. Hey, Jack, I'm gonna need a ladder for the top one. Gotcha. Oh. <laughs> So my next tip is to come up with a color palette for your bookshelves. I think that this will help you to really create a really cohesive look. 
I really want to be able to add in this sort of creamy, beigey, almost like washed out terracotta kind of color. I don't have a lot of this color as far as accessories, but I do have books. So a combination of items can help you create your color palette. So I'm gonna be going for some of these beigey colors, some whites, a little bit of black, and shades of creams. And I think that'll give me a really cohesive look. So I'm ready to put this in right now, but the problem is, is that it's a little bit on the small side. It's a little bit underwhelming. You can see how it really doesn't fill out the space. So the next thing I like to do is I like to use books. You can use books just by themselves because they um, in and of themselves are very interesting and add, of course, this feeling of what the, <laughs> the actual purpose of bookshelf is, is books. But I think you could also use them as decor to really elevate the items, leave them sitting alone. I always like to look for great titles as well. So uh, maybe I'll grab a couple and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I've got a couple books here. This is The Mediterranean Home and Mediterranean Living. I'm freaking out over these books right now. Summer is not that far off, so I'm getting really excited about these, and I know I'm gonna want to actually be able to reach in and grab them. So I think that you can have some great titles, have some great books that you really love. I think that'll really just help you be excited to actually interact with your bookshelves. I think that's really important. Instead of just putting stuff up there that's just, just gonna gather dust, why not have things up here that you really love and just bring you a lot of joy when you come to look at them? <laughs> the next thing I like to do is get my workout <laughs> with, my, <laughs> with my accessories. <laughs> this thing will definitely give you a workout. It is legit. I bought this off of Amazon actually. I'll leave a link for all the items that I show you today, but I think the thing that I love about this and why I use it over and over and over in my design work is because it has a really cool, interesting shape to it. When you get up close to it, it's got this incredible texture to it. So when you're putting your shelves together, I'm gonna <laughs> put this in here first so I can actually talk. <laughs> it's that heavy. So a couple things that are already happening here. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm varying the textures. So you can see right now, I'm into these sort of rustic textures. Uh, I want something that just feels literally just rough to your, to your touch. And then the books are really smooth. So you really need to vary the textures of the items going on your shelves. That'll really help add a lot of interest. The next thing you wanna think about is adding different shapes to your bookshelves. I think that's really important. So obviously this one has a very different shape from the other items that are in here. And what we're gonna do is place that right on the center here. So now I've got a completely different shape represented and it just starts to add a lot of interest to the eye. It really helps you kind of move your eye around. Now, a lot of people talk about a visual triangle. I don't worry about that so much. I just try to just really kind of vary the heights in these items. I could still put something over to the side if I want to. I could move this over and, whoop. <laughs> I could move this over and have something else here or I can have something going left, right, center, left, right again. You can kind of see how I'm moving the eye around. Uh, I think that's more important than feeling like you have to create a, a triangle. That can be kind of stressful. I wouldn't worry about that. The other thing I'm gonna need to do is I've got this kind of uh, beige-ish kind of color here. So I need to represent that in here again. So I'm gonna grab some books and probably add them down here so your eye can see this color and probably add it up here as well so that you kind of create a visual, I always think of it more of a zigzag than a triangle. Hopefully that makes more sense. I feel like the zigzag is the way that you will visually read the way you would read a room, it's the way you read a space. And so giving the eye a way of zigzagging down will help you to see all the colors and help it to feel really cohesive. Another thing I like to do is I like to use the idea of repetition. So 
Obviously, I don't have a lot of the same items up here. I've repeated books, I've repeated faces, like, but I mean even a little bit more than that. I think sometimes, especially if you've got a really large set of bookcases or if they're flanking a TV, it, right? So you've got two sides. I think adding a little bit of repetition in the items themselves can help your eye to simply rest on them. So I've got this set of dough bowls. I've got a set of three actually. So on this side, I'm gonna use one. I was gonna say two. No, I'm gonna use one on this side. And then when I get to the other side, I'm gonna actually use both, but they're smaller. And so they'll be a little bit different, but your eye sees that object and it just gives it a little bit of a rest. The other thing that I will be repeating is I have two of these exact same faces. So you can actually repeat the same item on both sides. So you might not wanna repeat it on the one shelf if you just have a single shelf that you're styling up. That might almost feel a little too repetitive for the eye and maybe not very interesting. But I think that definitely if you have two sides, in double bookshelves, that repeating an actual element from it can be really, really nice. The other thing that I forgot to tell you about is what I'm doing back here is I'm leaving empty space. That is really important when you're styling up your bookshelves because if they feel, like I said in the beginning, I love that overstuffed feeling. I think it's really pretty. I just don't like to live with my bookshelves feeling that way. I personally like to leave empty space. It gives the eye somewhere to rest and it doesn't feel too busy for your eye. Now, when I go to close these doors, I'm gonna have a little bit of problem because you might not see much of anything. So I might actually fudge this just a little bit. It's a little bit of a trick because they have doors that have this black center down the middle of them, right? You're, <laughs> Jack's over there getting ready to go. <laughs> I you can see him. <laughs> Jack's eliciting. <laughs> but I, okay, so I've got these here with the black down the center. So when I go to close them, I have to think about that as an extra layer of the way that I go to style up my shelf. So I generally know how I want to style them, but I may end up having to move this over slightly so a little bit, so enough of it shows, so it doesn't look empty. And then I might actually just put something black on this other side. Again, it's just a feeling of a restful place. So yeah, okay, this is getting heavy. <laughs> Let me set this down. I've got this really cool bus that we found at one of the little local antique shops and it's black on black. And so, like I said, it's gonna give the eye some of the rest. And so, yeah, I'm gonna stick this in here on this shelf. And that way, when the door closes, you've got a little bit something going on, but then it's still, you're visually resting as well. All right, what do we have left? in the center and then I'm putting the items and actually that little sphere isn't heavy at all. Like it can roll off and whack us in the head. It's not uh, solid. <laughs> so I do actually think about safety. I do think it is actually important. Uh, but yeah, I think that putting super heavy items on the top can just make it feel like it's just super heavy. So I've got the Tom Ford Dolo too. Love this book so much. I love to style my shelves with it. It's just a little bit bold and graphic and it gives you a lot of interest. And so we were finalizing all the little pieces and yeah, there's a little bit of emptiness up here and I think I'm gonna put maybe the bowl. It is a heavy bowl, but it's not visually heavy. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. If there's one book that I use every single time I style up, it's definitely the Architectural Digest book because it's got a really nice creamy color and texture. I own a couple copies. 
yeah, like I just really love styling up with it because it's a really big size. It's a really beautiful graphic cover and it just always looks amazing on the shelf. So you need a copy of this. Okay, all right, I'm about done. <laughs> Well, that was pretty the, simple, right? It was simple, and honestly, yeah. this looks amazing. Yeah, it only took us a few minutes. It doesn't have to take super long. It really didn't. I do think having the right ingredients does actually help. So towards the bottom, I was realizing I keep looking for yeah. a travertine bowl. Like I'm looking for a low travertine bowl. It's like I keep saying that over and over. So. I am going to do some shopping and probably buy another piece because I've had to steal my little uh, <laughs> ammonite. That's what that thing's called. Yeah. I stole it from the bedroom in order to be able to finish this. I need an extra piece. I, I just keep stealing from the rooms and that's when I know now's the time to go ahead and invest because I don't always have exactly what I'm looking for. So we thought it'd be really fun. We're gonna take a shot of this. We'll take yeah. a picture of it and we will uh, hopefully be able to get it back in time to be able to post with this so they can yeah. shop it. Yeah. Can we turn it into a PDF for them? We'll figure something out. Okay, and then we'll also put it on the blog. If you guys aren't following our blog, you 100% need to be following our blog because a lot of times we give you a lot more information. We give you unique stories over there and we are actually gonna be traveling. Yes. So if you wanna see where we are in real time, check out our Instagram because this week in particular is really gonna be fun because we have done something really crazy. <laughs> we have. I have been married to this one for almost 24 years. We've been together for almost 26. Yeah, it's crazy. So we are taking a crazy adventure and we're going to be in Morocco and then we're gonna fly through Paris and we were like, well, while in Paris, why not stay? Why not stay a little bit? Yeah, so make sure you're following us over on Instagram. And of course, we hope you'll hit subscribe here as well because yeah. we love when you guys become a part of this amazing community. But if you're looking for more content, we've got incredible playlist, uh, an entire playlist of styling videos. That just means how to put things together in your rooms. And uh, yeah, we've got the interior design playlist, the Ikea playlist, lots of There's options. There's so much good stuff here. Absolutely. So I hope that today it was really helpful and a lot of fun for you. Check down below for all the details of what we use today. Yeah. And I will make sure to put the points down there as well. Let me know if that's helpful to you guys. Um, and then I'll maybe it's something I can do in future videos because I always make a list. <laughs> <laughs> that way I don't forget anything when I tell you guys. Exactly. It makes me try to think through like why I do what I do. Or like at a lot of times I do it without thinking about it. Uh, so then when we do the videos, I'm like, and this is why. <laughs> I know, because I'm always asking, I'm like, so, but how do you know how to do this? Like, I don't know. I don't know, uh, I just do it. <laughs> Let's think about what it is I do. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for stopping in. We can't wait to see you guys in the next one. No, nothing to cheers with. I guess nope. we'll have to go get a coffee. <laughs> get a coffee. All right, uh, it's probably about time for my second one anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
but I'm doing that so that visually your eye doesn't get tired of seeing a specific item in each of these little so grids. Cool. I don't know. It's just me making my pulls up as I go. Oh my God, I love it. 